Folks, uh, we are back, and it is panel time following the interview with uh, Andy McCarthy. And joining us uh, on the panel, uh, once again, is economist and uh, University of Maryland professor, Newsmax contributor Peter Morisi, and the president of the Galen Institute, Grace Marie Turner. Good to see both of you. Thanks for being here. Hi, Steve. Nice to be with you. Hello, Peter. Oh, Peter? Peter. All right. Well, yeah. we'll start. Is Peter there? Yes, I okay, am. Good, good. All right, let's start. Let now I do. Yes, yes, yes. The the uh, bugs. We uh, sprayed some rain, and the bugs are gone. So let me ask you, uh, uh, Peter. Start with you. And um, th this story that um, our friends at the Media Research Center said not one of the networks touched came out uh, Wednesday. The CBO report of last week um, that a minimum wage hike would uh, cost uh, the private sector fifteen billion dollars, and it would raise the uh, the deficit. Well, sure, if you destroy 500,000 jobs, which the CBO previously found, you're going to have a lot fewer people paying taxes and a lot more people collecting benefits, more and bigger benefits than before. Absolutely. You know, some things you just can't play with. And uh, one of them is the minimum wage right now, because the economy is so depressed, you just can't turn around and mandate that people get more money. But you have to understand how the liberal mind works. They've gotten virtually everything they have obtained through coercion. So why not coerce this? You know, this is we're on the road to Greece. That's all I can say. But we don't have the islands and beaches the way they do. <laughs> and Grace Marie, again, you know, that not one of the networks as of Friday night, and this was a report that came out Wednesday, even reported on this. Of course, if it were the other way around, we know we would be hearing it uh, over and over, and uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz would be on every show in the country. And then we wonder why it is voters are not well informed over the issues. This is exactly why. And this is another example, Steve, of the federal government thinking that it can force the private sector to spend more of its own money so the politicians could get the credit. But as Peter says, this is going to be so destructive, and it particularly harms the very people that these policies are designed to help is to get people who are at the lowest end of the income scale, get them a, a job, help them to get their foot on the ladder so that they can begin to become productive members of society. This hurts that agenda. Of course. And, and, and Peter, the myth, and I hear it over and over, nobody working full time, 40 hours with a family to raise, you know, should be making that minimum wage that, 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 that puts them at such a low. But, but it's such a, isn't it, am I right? It's such a small percentage. Of, of anyone who's you know, working and living and raising a family on the minimum wage. Isn't it mostly you know, part-time workers uh, who, who, don't, you know, who just want to work part-time or kids? When I started at McDonald's, I guess it was two-something an hour when I was 16. That kind of, uh, or college students, isn't that the most of the minimum wage earners in this country? Or it's, it's young, a lot of young people, people out of college who haven't found a job, and so they take something, you know, working at Starbucks or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of that. Uh, but what's really significant here is that a lot of the administration's policies or the policies that have been built up over several administrations, you know, depress the wage. One of them is that we give these folks free health insurance now with Medicare or Medicaid, excuse me, and food stamps and what have you so that the cash wage is actually a small share of their income, even if uh, – there were a lot of the people, whenever I, this comes up, I get hauled into TV and uh, I'm put up against uh, uh, a mother who's 30 years old and has, you know, three small children and says, I can't eat on this, but although she looks well fed. Uh, and um, the, the reality is it isn't a significant part of her wage. If it was, if it was a significant part of her income, if she wasn't getting a negative income tax, food stamps and free health care, She'd get on a Greyhound bus and take one of those jobs at a meatpacking plant in Iowa, and that meatpacking plant wouldn't have to rely on immigrants to find workers. So that's part of what's going on as well. Right, Grace Marie. It, it, you know, separate from the minimum wage, I don't want to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, quote, misquoted here by uh, any of those people watching that might misquote me. But it, 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 what, what was just described by Peter is, you know, the culture of dependency, totally. And we're making it worse with Obamacare. I mean, and and the president and Speaker, former Speaker Pelosi, brag about it, saying that here now we have people who don't have to work because we're going to give them health insurance. <laughs> and as we have learned, that means that we're going to have 2.5 million 
fewer full-time people in the workforce because of Obamacare, directly because of this. And, and Peter, so it just Peter, adds yeah. to it. Oh, and this Peter is important. And Grace here. Uh, until, yeah. until that statement, until they came out with that crazy statement, until Nancy Pelosi said that and the left started saying that, until that very moment in history, it was always a good thing to, to work, to want to work, to encourage people to work, to have a job, to, for prestige, for a number of reasons. At that moment, they changed it to where, oh, you know, it's good that you don't have to work. It's good that you don't, you don't work. We'll do it for you. Complete change. Well, we're Dependency the first society. Yeah. I mean, that's really it. We're the first hey, civilization to have a leisure class at the bottom. You see, we have an aristocracy. It's the people that rhythmically and with absolute certain mind, without, with mindless certainty, vote for Democrats because they get this subsistence wage for basically voting for Democrats. I mean, that's what's going on here. This is a vote farm. That's all it is. But we have a leisure class right, guys, at the bottom. No, you're absolutely right. Well, let, let's talk about, you mentioned immigrants before. Uh, Andy McCarthy was with us earlier, and, and we were talking about uh, the news that uh, came out today, uh, the revelation that um, ICE agents freed 68,000 illegal immigrants with criminal records out of a uh, out of uh, over uh, like 140,000 or so, they freed 68,000 of them. Instead of deporting them, uh, they just let them go. And we had always heard about prior, uh, prioritizing, uh, at least the president you know, changed the law in his own way by saying we're going to start to prioritize uh, when it comes to um, uh, illegal immigrants and who we deport. Well, I guess if you're a certain kind of criminal to the tune of 68,000, Grace Marie, um, you get a pass. And you wonder, was that just incompetence? Was there some deliberate decision made? I mean, this is the kind of thing that just makes not only law enforcement officials that have gone through so much to find, to find them and to, to, to get them identified and to go through the court processes, for the administration then to just release them is another violation of the, the, of the rule of law. Peter, nothing new, huh? No, I mean, the Obama administration policy is to pack as many Hispanic immigrants as it possibly can into the United States, have them have babies, and grow up to vote Democratic. That's what this is all about. That's all it's about. There's nothing more to it. There's nothing particularly sophisticated about it. It's a cynical policy to change America. Mr. Obama doesn't like the people that are here, especially those that don't vote for him, so he's going to import people that he likes. And this is one way of getting it done. I mean, there are so many things we could do to end the immigration problem. One is not give driver's licenses to illegal immigrants. Don't let the state of Maryland have its own immigration policy where you don't have to prove citizenship to get a, or legal residency to get a driver's license. Check for legal residency when we have traffic stops. Check for legal residency when people register children for school. You know, if we did that, uh, you know, then we'd get someplace. But you got to remember, a lot of the people that would enforce that would be people like school teachers who rhythmically yeah. vote for Democrats, or at least the people yeah, that absolutely. run them, and are basically cynical political hacks. I mean, if you want to meet a cynical political hack, go find your typical high school principal in a northeastern city. That's how you get there. Great. You're really good Grace at Marie, it. If you're really you're good right. at it. You get a PhD and become a university president. <laughs> well, and we're making it even worse now by saying, okay, come on over and, and you can get free health care. Whether if you're an illegal immigrant, you're one of the only ones that's not going to be subject to the Obamacare mandate to purchase health insurance. You can still show up at a hospital emergency room, and, and the federal government requires the hospital to provide you care, but illegal immigrants are getting a special I'm deal. glad you brought that up because we're going to talk to the two of you when you return for the panel next hour. about. We're going to talk about the deadline today, which I thought was extended. Uh, we'll talk about Obamacare in the next uh, panel next hour. Thank you both, Grace Marie Turner and Peter Marisi. When we come back, a tribute to our friend Noel Shepard, who passed away over the weekend. Brent Bozell will be here. Steve Molsberg show. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Molsberg show. Introducing the drug.